What is going on everyone? It's DSP and I'm here with John Rambo as always, the, uh, the man who picked the most perverted art I've ever seen for his custom choice this past Classy week. art, man! And uh, welcome to this week's edition of Smart Guys. Today is November 20th, 2010. However, depending on how long it takes for me to actually edit these videos, it might not go up on today, so it might, oh no, go up on the 21st. Big deal. Oh, shit. I know, I'm falling behind, John. We'll pull the greens out. It's awful. Um, people can't live without Smart Guys for a day. Uh, your injection. Anyway, this week a little bit of a special episode because there was actually a special three hour edition of Raw this past Monday, which they actually called like Raw Retro and it's Old uh, School Raw. It, they called it Old School Raw, Retro Raw. So it's kind of like a throwback to the old Monday Night Raw from the 90s, uh, the original. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but just because it's going to be a, a three hour Raw that we're talking about plus SmackDown. This might go a little bit longer it's than six usual. Hour video. It might be a several, maybe 10 for 12 parts, but uh, we're actually timing right now, so hopefully we'll not, you know, go over 30 minutes and it'll let us know to stop and make the next part. So, anyway, <clears throat> so talking about Raw, uh, it was kind of weird because they didn't even announce this until last week. It wasn't like it had any significant buildup, mm. but they decided to do a what they called a, a old school Raw this week, which is a three hour special, had a lot of the old logos and the old style kind of graphics and openings that they used to have with the original one yeah. that I got back in the 90s. Well, it was more of like a, it was more of like a amalgamation of all different yes. uh, classic stuff, because they, they actually never used that for Raw, that, that intro, like that, right. that was from like, that was like the 80s. Really? Yeah, like the, the first, like the, the leader in sports entertainment, like that. Right, 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 right. I don't think yeah. that was actually part of the original. No, that wasn't part of Raw. Yeah, you're right. right. Some of the, so some of the stuff was like a throwback, and some of the, some of the stuff was like the real Raw. The right. Original raw the original Raw intro was there, and it was interesting to note that they were using the WWF logos all night, not yeah, the WWE. Yeah, finally, finally came back. How long that. did it take them? Ten years to freaking get balls enough to use their own Just, logos again? Yeah, what the so, fuck? But, uh, There's something so cool about that logo, though. So it is. It's so, so, no. so classic about it. It does. Right? It looks like it's professional. You know, right now, right. the WWE is like freaking fucking scribbled W's and it's like... It makes, it, 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 makes it seem important and like also I'm sure we'll talk mm -hmm. about the setup of the, of the ring and everything. Absolutely. Too, so so uh, the show actually opened with an interview right off the bat. It's Mean Gene Okerlund and he's interviewing Cowboy Bob Wharton. So it's kind of a real throwback interview. They're doing it in front of the crowd. That's, uh, yeah, the that, that's the really cool thing about this. If you remember from the old classic... WWF shows, they used to have interviews on this like podium in front of the crowd, like kind of near the entrance ramp. Yeah, I really like it. It makes the, it makes the crowd look huge. Yes. Like, you really see the, the size of the stadium behind you. Right, right. And not like always in the ring, because like do everything in the ring for the most part now, like mm -hmm. interviews. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a different visual thing. So. Right. It really was a throwback. I felt like I was in the 80s watching it's this, awesome. you know, this cool. classic interview. It was fun. Uh, Wade Barrett interrupts the interview because, you know, he's in the title match with Randy Orton coming up this Sunday in Survivor Series. Then The Miz interrupts because he's they're still teasing that The Miz is going to use his money in the bank contract this Sunday and try to win the title from whoever wins it's the match. probably not. <laughs> or he's probably going to fuck it all up. It'll be some retarded botch that, you know, no one yeah. will know really what was supposed to happen. So it, Miz was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to really throw a monkey wrench into things. I'm going to use it tonight in my contracts. And then you even have your pay-per-view match on Sunday. You'll have to figure it out, whatever happens from tonight. But then John Cena appears on the Titan Tron, which is kind of weird that he just appears randomly instead of coming out. Right. And he says... Uh, well, no, you're, I'm not going to let Miz screw everything up because I challenged The Miz, and if Miz is the man, he'll wrestle me tonight. So, of course, The Miz accepts, and that kind of ends the initial promo. Right. Um, so the first match of the night is actually Dolph Ziggler with Vicky Guerrero, and again, yeah, the, he's back with Vicky. they like the old school uh -huh. ropes. Well, this is the cool thing, yeah. It, 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 the, the ring itself is the classic ring. The old school, what were they, grayish, like, ropes. And, and yeah, the red, white, and blue ropes. Yes, they and, did, yep, uh, yep, yep. Yeah. Yep, and the, you know, the, again, the classic style logo really looked like the old WWF ring from back in the day. Something about it, like, it, it makes it seem like just more serious. It makes it seem more You're exciting. Kind of, really bad. Yeah. You remember when they used to fill out like the Pontiac Silver Dome? Used to be, you know, completely full. These people used mm. to go freaking ape shit on every match. It really brought you back to the days where it was that big kind of a, a feeling, like it was right. an event to be there. Yeah, they had that uh, the sirens going off with the old raw and. Uh, 
the that. classic raw sirens. Yes, yeah. McMahon. Welcome to Monday Night Raw. Yeah, and then of course it wasn't McMahon. Or anything was, could happen. It was freaking Michael oh, Cole. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's another. We'll talk about Michael Cole later. I guess we think so. Oh boy. Okay. When I, Michael Cole and Jr. were kind of dressed in like laid back old school outfits yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. So. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's Dolph Vig- uh, Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler. And guess whose opponent it's is? Ziggler. It's sexual chocolate, not Mark Henry. It's the old version of Mark Henry, sexual chocolate, even though really it wasn't. He didn't even cut his hair. I thought he would at least cut his hair for it, but he didn't. He just comes out in the outfit and kind of acted, you know, like he used to. How many guys have then. done that gimmick, though? Like, Viscera was the sexual chocolate. He was, and yeah, Big Daddy Ree. And then fucking... Uh, oh, no, before he was Big Daddy Ree, yeah. right. He did that sexual angle. And then the Godfather was kind of like... Then Kali, yep. Kali's like the lover guy. Oh, so yeah. They, they keep doing this with these guys. So, uh, you know, to throw back, he's, he's kind of trying to wrestle like he used to when he was sexual chocolate. He keeps, like, insinuating to Vicky, like, mmm, hey, baby, you know, I want to see you after the match. But uh, it's pretty funny because Dol- like, they know that they can't have Dolph just win, like, easily on this giant guy. Right. They actually let him do two zigzag finishers, and then bef- before finishing him, he puts him in the sleeper hold, and then finally he gets the win. So I guess it, it makes sense, you know, when you're wrestling such a giant guy like that, it made sense that he had to do multiple things. Yeah, Mark Henry's just always like the legend they brought out. He's been, he's, been like, <laughs> he's been in the company for like, since like 95. He has, that's, that's, insane, that's true. Crazy. Um, so then there was a really weird promo backstage between Tony Atlas and the Hart Dynasty. Yeah. The Hart Dynasty kind of saying, we're going to work together tonight, we know we haven't been on the same page. And then Tony Atlas just goes on to babble like an insane fool, saying that back in the day, him and Rocky Marciano didn't always get along. I saw Rocky, they, Rocky Johnson. Or, was what was it? Yeah, yeah. No, Rocky Johnson was his tag partner. So oh, okay. He's, uh, he's, he's like, like a crazy like old uh, grandfather type person. Right, it's weird. He's just babbling on. You go to see your uh, grandparents in the nursing home. And, uh, <laughs> So I don't know why they did that. They kind of made him look stupid. But, yeah, it was a goofy but thing. I don't even know if that was ever his usual. Like maybe that was his character back in the day. He was never even on Raw. He was from like that guy's from well, like right. He was way, way, way back. But the next match was Slater and Gabriel, who are the tag champions against the Hart Dynasty for the tag titles. As the match starts, you know, uh, D- uh, D- D- D.H. Smith is doing well, but then oh, all okay. of a sudden, when he goes for the tag, Tyson Kidd turns and kicks him right in the face. And now finally the Hart Dynasty is split. They've only been teasing this for like four months now. Finally, officially, the Hart Dynasty care? is split up. No one cares at this point. So you have to assume that they're going to probably go on singles careers. But I don't know. I think they're just going to get lost in the you know the swamp which, of, of guys that aren't being used. Which is what always happens when the, I just yeah. have to say the only tag team I can think of. Well, there's been two tag teams that were successful: Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys. When they both broke well, up, they, they did all right. They were together for a very long time, though. That's right. And this, and they got guys, over. They got themselves over as a tag team. As a tag team, like, multiple these, time tag champs. Right. Like, you telling me like Tyson Kidd's over with the crowd? I mean, I don't know. I don't think either is of them are. Is it going to matter? You know, when he's in a singles run. I don't know. It's going to be hard to push those guys. Yeah. Well, um, they're broken up now. So now there's a backstage interview with Mean Gene, and he's interviewing Randy Orton, and all of a sudden, our truth interrupts and basically says, "Listen, Cena's going to screw up? you." So it, well, yeah, he does say, "What's up?" And then he says, let's get crunk. Bob Ward still has his cast on for like 50 years. <laughs> he never took it off. Yeah. His, arm, his arm never healed. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, r says, Cena's going to screw you. Uh, and Orton says, well, then I'm just going to punt him tonight to make sure he can't even be the ref on Sunday. Then Howard Finkel. This is really cool. Howard Finkel. He's great. He's another, another, another aspect of the show that makes us just, as soon as he gets to the microphone. Yep. Like, you, are, you feel like it's back in the day. Mr. Roberts gave him the mic, and he's like, ooh, welcome. He's like, oh, shit, this, this is fucking important, you know? This is serious. Oh, yeah, it was very serious because it was the Brooklyn Brawler with Harry, Harvey Whippleman as his manager. Harvey he's, Whippleman. He says he's going to channel, challenge anyone in the whole roster to come out and fight him because he's a legend. Mm-hmm. And, of course, it ends up being Zeke, you know, Ezekiel yeah. Jackson, who I guess now is a face because uh, I guess so. he came out and he was like posing with a smile on his face and everyone was like kind of cheering because they're like, I don't know who what he is. It's baby and face. He basically squashes the Brooklyn Yeah, some nice little touches seconds. in this show. They actually like, they actually were like referring to things that happened in the past, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. most times they try to forget about the past. Right. So like little touches like Wimbledon and, uh, and the, what's his face? Finkel had a feud in the past. Yeah. The tuxedo matches. So they they kind of like had a little inner yeah. change. So yep. nice little, little touches in there. Nice. <laughs> Um, okay. So now it's been announced that David Otunga will have a match during the night. He's going to go against R-Truth, but then... <laughs> the, no, uh, the GM, the GM says, said that Bear is going to face R-Truth. No, 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 he said that... No, I screwed this up. He said there's going to be this... Otunga's going to be a special match. That's right. Night, 
and that Barrett has to face our truth himself. Because Otunga has to be in another match right. later tonight. Special, That's right. Special match for him. Again, another stupid GM, the mysterious GM, who no one knows who it is. Yeah. And, Drew and Waller was, even had a yeah, line. They had laptops back then? Like, this is old school Raw. There's no laptops. <laughs> so that was cool. I think people are tired of that shit now. Yeah. So anyway, the match that had been teased earlier in the night was supposed to be John Cena versus The Miz. Ends up getting changed last minute because The Miz dog doesn't want to wrestle. He says, you're going to wrestle Alex Riley, who's my protege. Alex Cena, Riley, Cena he, wins the match, and then incidentally... Yeah, Alex Riley uh, got a DUI arrest on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. So he may not be around for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows if we're going to see him again. And it was funny because he was kind of riding on the coattails of Miz, and now it's like, are they going to keep him around after a DUI well, arrest? just throw somebody else in there. Right. They're like, fucking whoever. Right. So uh, then Orton hits the ring after the match, starts, you know, you know, beef with Cena. Then the Raw GM interrupts again. And says, well, you two are going to be on Piper's Pit tonight in a special edition. Everyone's like, oh, Roddy Piper's here. Oh, my God. You know, yeah, everyone's cool. freaking out. Uh, the next segment actually had the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov. Uh, in a, in not a match, but they kind of came out. It was like a Santino comedy show. Right. They came out. They started singing the Russian National Anthem. So Santino and Vladimir Kozlov come out interrupt them. He's like, well, Kozlov wants to sing the National Anthem with you. And they start singing, and it's absolutely awful. The best part was when... Uh, Santino goes to the Sheik. Mm -hmm. Sheik, what do you have to say? And he starts rambling about Hulkamania. <laughs> but you knew he was going to do what that. What the f I, I, I create Hulk Hogan, you know. I, I lay down and blah, 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 and I am a jobber and all that. I'm sure that was, that was a crazy shoot moment. <laughs> then all of a sudden, out awesome. of nowhere, Slick, I forget what his last name is, but Slick returns. Right. Uh, starts rapping, starts dancing. You guys have been on freaking Up and down. Oh, a hundred years. Like, seriously. Like 20 years. I've not seen that guy on in so long. Yeah. Um, so then, okay, up next there's finally another match. It's the Usos with Tamina and Superfly Jimmy Snuka, who Super happens fly. to be Tamina's dad in real life, yep. against Santino and Kozlov for the number one contendership. Um, goes back and forth a little bit. Out of nowhere, Santino hits the Cobra Strike, and for some yeah. reason it works in this match, and they get the three counts. So now, Santino and Kozlov are the number one contenders. Ooh, I'm really cool. excited about that. Wouldn't it be cool to do the Heart Dynasty versus the Nexus guys? That, might be a, that would probably be a good match. The Dynasty is broken, John. That would have been awesome. It's over. It's, that was, uh, can't do it. <laughs> the fucking Usos are jobbers. So, Sheamus once again comes out trying to get after Santino. This is like the fifth week in a row now. Hates Santino. Sheamus hates Santino. Does he care about the title? He doesn't care about anything else but kicking Santino. Shit. And uh, John Morrison once again comes out and makes the save in John this Morrison case. protects uh, Santino. I think they're like together. I think so. I think oh, actually okay. they're, they're, they've are they been going steady behind the scenes. And we just don't know about it. But they're going to reveal that. I guess Morrison challenges Sheamus to a match at Survivor Series. But I don't know if it was ever announced that it was actually going to happen or not in the in the course of the night. I remember he challenged they them. Like, they stuck the graphic up there after a while. Yeah. Like, this is happening. So... All right, so actually the special match that Otunga was going to be in ends up being against Kofi Kingston from SmackDown. So it's an inter-promotional uh, inter match. Uh, during the match, George the Animal Steel comes out and eats the turnbuckle like he used to back in the day. Um, Kofi ends up winning the match. Uh, so this is like the 42nd loss in a row for Otunga. Besides the match he won against Edge on SmackDown last right. week, which he didn't really win because it was Kane interfered. So I don't remember Otunga legitimately winning a match since he's joined Nexus. I don't think he has. It's hard um, on the mic, by the way. Actually, I got a, George, a quick George Animal Steel uh, story I have. I went to an okay. independent show like a month ago. Mm -hmm. and it was like these two random in indie guys fighting. And George Animal Steel was a ringside enforcer. So okay. he was just like outside the ring like doing some bullshit. And uh, one of the guys did a spot where he went to dive off the top rope into the, to, to, onto the other end on the outside. And like, like a backflip. And George Animal Steel was at like, his back turn and he fucking moved himself in the way. He got fucking <laughs> destroyed by this guy. <laughs> He's probably like 70. Oh my he just went, he's crumpled to the ground. They had to help him to the back. Oh and, uh, my god. That was crazy. That was crazy. It was probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen in wrestling. Oh. And so at a random uh, you know, uh, high school gym, like about a month ago. So. Oh, uh, I don't think he was supposed to eat the pavement. No, he wasn't supposed to, he wasn't supposed to be in the spot. He had his back turned. He moved himself into oh, the. Oh my god. Oh. So that was, was crazy. That's awful. Yep. Um, so then in another backstage promo, they're interviewing John Morrison saying, What's going on? I have to say, this is probably one of the best camera angles I've seen 
Seamus boots him, but the way that oh. the camera angle was, it really looked like he was like 3D fucking stomped him. It was fucking face. weird because Arn Anderson was talking to him. Yeah. And then it looks like they almost set him up. They're like, oh, you're. you're yeah, great. it did. It looked like they were standing here for a second. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a good like, job. Right here. No, a little bit to the left. Right there. Just stick right there. And then all of a sudden, just a 3D boot. Boom! Right yeah. in the face. It was a really good yeah, perspective. Well done, sure. So, oh, that's right. And that's when Seamus accepted the match at Summer, or SummerSlam at Survivor okay, Series. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Next was the clusterfuck of the show. Um, Hacksaw Sim, Jim Juggin, talking to Oksana. Oh, uh, yeah. Was... Who still has the million dollar belt. Okay. Dusty Rhodes gets involved. He pretends to be her mother. Pretends to be her mother. Gold Dust comes out. Then Ted DiBiase comes out. The And and the, the senior DiBiase and IRS, gives, Cody Rhodes. Gold Dust gives the million dollar belt that he stole back to the Ted DiBiase senior, who's with IRS. Right. Uh, and then he goes to his son, do you want the belt? He goes, no, it's something else. I don't else. want it anymore, right. And then he doesn't even give a shit about the gold dust anymore. That whole thing just goes... It just got thrown out. That's kind of a shit, because those guys, like, the, it sucked, like, those, mat, you know, but they worked hard, and they deserved better than just to be, like... Just throw out the angle. Written off, All right. fuck it. <laughs> so, I don't know. Cody Rhodes said something, I forget what he said, he was in there somewhere. Gold dust asked him for beauty tips, and he said something like, uh... That's right. Yeah, no, yeah. or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, like, something weird. Or dashing or something, I don't know. Um, and then the Tonka started dancing, Ron Simmons comes out, and he goes, damn, what the hell, you know, because his old tag phrase was, damn, when he saw weird shit going on, and right. seeing all these idiots dance around in the back for no reason was pretty weird. Um, Could have done better with the Tonka than that. Really weird, I don't know, it was really, just, really, really weird. Yeah, it, was, um, it was fun. So then, up next, it was R-Truth and... Uh, Wade Barrett, but to be honest, all I could look at was Eve because she looks like a whore, a uh, slut. Whoa, a whore slut. <laughs> she looks like a whore, I mean, slut. <laughs> whore, was, whore wasn't strong enough. Wait a minute, not a whore, <laughs> a slut. I just can't help it. She comes out and it's like her boobs are fucking bouncing uh, all over the place. She doesn't like, even like the song sucks so bad. Like she's trying to dance. Yeah, she's trying she, to dance, so it doesn't make can't. it doesn't it doesn't like. And like I said, I'm pretty, I'm almost positive she used to be a, an actual cheerleader. For, like, I'm sure she's, I'm sure she can fucking dance her ass off, but the song like doesn't work. Yeah, it's she's just trying to cope with moves. And she's they're just, trying to use her like this, and it's just like, why does the Latina girl have to come out dancing to this song with a black guy? It's just so many racial problems with this. Stereotype at this point. At least point. she stays out there with them now. She used to just leave. Yeah, now she's out there. So she's anyway, away from it is a really good match. Um, I remember there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of near falls. Barrett does win. Finally, he hits the wasteland at the end after actually our truth escaping it a couple of times. He ends up pinning it at the end. So it was a pretty good. It, it makes Barrett look a strong, legitimate contender for the title on Sunday. Right. So that's good. Yep. Um, so Del Rio now comes out, and as he's coming out. Tito Santana shows up. He interrupts and says, no, I guess I'm going to announce Del Rio coming out. Then the car drives in, which usually happens in the Del Rio intro, and who's driving it but Chavo Guerrero Sr., who they call Chavo Classic, I guess, because they don't want to get it confused with Chavo Guerrero Jr., who's really Chavo yeah, you can't Guerrero. Tell which one's the old, you can't tell which one's older and the younger one. Very, very silly. Which one's um, the classic one? For the first time, now this is what I found weird. This is the first time... With Survivor Series coming up on Sunday, keep in mind this is Monday, so it's less than a week. They mentioned that Del Rio's going to captain a Survivor Series team. Yeah. And everyone goes, what? Like, we didn't even know there was a Survivor Series match. Del Rio's like, it's like everybody, isn't he? Yeah, he is, he's only for himself. So it's so like, why does he get the captain? Like, I have a team, team now. So Del Rio's out there, he's like, no, the legends should pay homage to me, not me pay homage to the legends, you know, his usual... Right. You know, they should, brought all the, they should have brought all the Mexican luchadors from WCW. <laughs> and I love Parka. Bring them all back and kick his ass. And the pianos, yeah. But, uh, no, actually, Sergeant Slaughter comes out and basically says, You puke, you slime, you blah, 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 you know, you gotta beat me. Of course, Del Rio ends up winning the match. Yeah, I mean, he's, gonna be... he's probably pretty up there. He's probably 60. Oh, dude, there's no, there's no way Slaughter's anywhere near like he used to be. You yeah, know, well, he tries he's so he, old he at this good point. But, uh, the real wins, then he goes in at tax slaughter again, but MVP comes and makes the say. Right. Um, I guess there was the a... The was way, way into MVP. The oh, MVP, yeah. MVP chance, so that was cool, you know. And it's good because, like we've been saying for months, he's been buried, buried, buried. Now, finally, he's getting pushed again, mm -hmm. so... Up next was a Mae Young segment, so... If you have to take a shit, I suggest now's the time. That was actually pretty funny, though. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, actually did, they actually did use the slut word that you just brought They up. did say, well, she called Lay Cool a bunch of sluts because they were insulting her. You bunch of sluts! And, uh, and all the divas came out. Then they said there's going to be a no DQ match. Mm. And then she calls them bitches, actually. Mae Young calls the, the Lay Cool bitches. Then all the face divas come out and beat the crap out of Lay Cool, and Mae Young pins and wins. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that was a little funny segment. 
Uh, but the cool, I think the highlight for me, the highlight of the show is that JR returned to the commentary for at least one match. Excellent. I mean, he is on par. He has not lost a beat. Yeah. He's really just as good as he used to be on the ball. It was kind of like dampered by Michael Cole. Like, I understand. Because there was a plot line there, yeah. I understand. Like, they could have, should have done it to like an extent. Like, maybe to a point. And then he could just maybe, like, not say anything. All right. But he just, like, the whole time he was just carrying on and on. Well, the whole thing is Michael so, Cole's pissed that JR's returned because Michael right. Cole feels like he's replaced JR as the voice and, of like, WWE. That's how Michael Cole should act, but it just, like, it took away from the match and from the JR. Like, right. It was just too much of it. It was, right. Point. They weren't commentating enough on the match. They should have had, they should have, he should have done it to, like, you know, half as much, like, to a point, just shut up. Right. So anyway, the match was Daniel Bryan against Jack Swagger, so it's another interpromotional match. I want to mention, this was probably match of the night for me. That yeah, was excellent. Great match, going back and forth. And it was funny because this is the first time where you've seen Daniel Bryan against someone like really big. And you don't think Swagger is a, like a big guy, but mm -hmm. when you saw him in the ring against him, you were like, holy shit, that guy really is like fucking 6'4". Yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah. You know, so they you know, really good match back and forth. So Brian, there's no, no Falcon coming out or any of that. Brian, let's see, he actually knocks out Jack Swagger with a kick, so it wasn't his normal mm -hmm. submission finish. You know, like actually. Was in that, a missile drop kick. Yes. Off the top. Yes. Other stuff. Very good match, so one of my, my favorites of the night. Um, then all of a sudden, after Brian wins, Ted DiBiase comes out and attacks him, so what Ted must have been talking about earlier in that really weird promo is that he wants the U.S. title. Yeah. So, that's really what that was about. That's actually going to be a match at uh, Survivor Series as well. Is it? Yes. Really? Yep. Okay, I'm sure they mentioned that at some point. I didn't know that. Um, so then now they start talking about Survivor Series. It's going to be Team Rey Mysterio against Team Del Rio, and everyone's like, "This is the. F it's not even a week before Survivor Series, and now you're announcing a Survivor Series match for the pay per view." Like they're calling it a traditional Survivor Series match, which is like, what is that? It's the same as, it's the, same as the bragging rights match. Yeah, that's what's like the month before. It's a, tra it's a traditional bragging rights match. So anyway. Uh, then they also, you'll hear it is, alright, they did announce officially Morrison versus Sheamus mm -hmm. uh, as a match. Uh, then JR leaves the announce table, which is kind of sad because you're like, fuck, you know, we wish he would be there for a little yeah, bit longer. This goes back to what I was saying before, that so if we br bring something to the show. Right. Something positive. Absolutely. Important and seriousness. So the main event, Piper's Pit, Roddy Piper. Well, they brought all well, the, uh, first the legends brought all the come legends out. Out. That's right, all the legends come out, and they obviously, you know. It was great having all those guys. Like, a lot of these people we've seen, it, like, over the last couple of years. It would have been cool if they had like one major like oh shit that guy's here, um, like a right. savage warrior type of deal. <laughs> yeah, someone who we haven't seen in a while. This is not right? really possible. So I mean, it, it was fun for what it was with the, with the old school stuff. I enjoyed it. Right. So okay, so now the main event is Piper's Pit. Roddy Piper comes out, gigantic monstrous chance for him because he has actually hasn't been on WWE in a couple of years. Yeah, a couple now. years. Uh, I do. He does look old now. I mean, the last yeah. time I saw him, he kind of looked. Now he's really starting to like wow. Okay. Yeah, he's got to be like uh, you yeah. know. Um, so he wants Cena to, to he, he, John Cena's there on the Piper's Pit, Cena and Orton, and he says to Cena, listen, you got to do the right thing, you know, you can't basically just hand the title over to Barrett, because if you do, you disgrace people, first of all, you disgrace anyone who's ever held the title, mm. but also, as you were saying, his kind of angle is that I never, you know, as Piper, never won the title, and for him, that's such an amazing honor, right. that for someone to just hand it to someone like Barrett is completely disgraceful. Piper added, like, Piper in his, t like, two, three minutes adds so much to the match, it's so much to that the title, right? Uh, in his little thing that that they've done in like the last you know yeah. several months, yeah, uh, several years. I mean, the title and it actually made you excited for this match in Survivor Series. Yeah, because now you like, actually oh, feel like wow, the title is valuable again right. because this guy came out this legend. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, he put so much value on it. So I never had that that title exactly. And then Cena um, came back at him, and see, this is like the best I've seen Cena in so long. Instead of being like this cartoon character, mm -hmm. he's actually like a person mm -hmm. and a real like a real human being, and he and the things he said. Uh, Added to it as well, so it was a good segment right mm -hmm. there. So it ends up, Cena you know, says, "Oh, I'm going to call it right down the middle." You know, after all their back and forth, Piper actually, I, what I liked when Piper said to Barrett, he says, "If you win that title on Sunday, you're a joke mm -hmm. because you didn't earn it. You're doing it just because and of this twisted shit it, that you're doing." Yeah, yep. And uh, and then uh, Barrett made made someone put a Nexus shirt on. Made Cena put the Nexus shirt right. on. Right. Which, why is he? Why didn't he have to do that? Like, I don't remember that. Yeah. Why did it take so long for that? Uh, he only wore the army, and now he has to put the shirt on. He was already. Now you're putting the shirt on. Even so. though he's out of it on Sunday, right. either way. Makes so no Cena sense. does put the shirt on, and then Orton, Randy Orton comes out, attacks uh, Barrett. Right. Now maybe you can make more sense of this than I can. Right. Randy it was Orton comes out. Randy Orton comes out. He's a, he attacks uh, Barrett. He's about to put the RKO on Barrett. He does his little crawling around crap. Right. <laughs> it's right. It's kind of bizarre. I don't know. Whatever. 
Right. Um, and then Cena gets in between them to stop them, mm -hmm. which I didn't really understand. Um, so instead, he, Orton gives the RKO to Cena. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> Cena like gets up quickly, and then uh, and then. You see, even you were confused at it. I don't. Yeah, remember. It, it kind of fell off a cliff at this point. Yeah. The segment was really good up to this point. He basically recovered from the RKO very quickly, and, <laughs> and then gave the FU to uh, to. to Orton. Right. And then he gave, then he gave one to... Uh, you mean the attitude adjustment. Whatever, man. And then the he, attitude adjustment. Then he gave one to Barrett as well. Right. For, and it's like... So why, yeah. didn't, why didn't he just let him do... I don't know. Makes no sense. He took the shirt off and then he walked up the ramp. Clusterfuck, but. you know, whatever, but... All right. I, think they just wanted to, I think they just wanted to end the show with Cena, like, coming out. Right, who's, what's he going to do on Sunday? Or making him, like, the, the focal point, like, he just beat everyone up. Right, so I think so. it kind of fell, it kind of fell off of a cliff there, but it was, it was good. So. so actually, we've gone pretty long just talking about that Raw. So yeah. now we're gonna take a, a quick break here. In part two, we're gonna talk about SmackDown this week, and then we'll talk about this week's uh, TNA Impact as well. So we'll be right back. Yay.